Hey guys, Mike here. So I got another video here on is it overkill? You know, I want to know you guys' opinion. I've got a couple other videos on this. I'll link them at the end of this one if you want to check them out if you haven't seen them yet. But we're talking about a, an entry pad here that's 4 by 14 Working, The guy I'm working for is an engineer. And he wanted this thing 12 inches thick just for an entry pad. It's not really going to be driven over by a vehicle or anything like that. And I want to know what you guys think. Is it overkill or not? You know, in my opinion, as much concrete as I pour, I could, I can definitely say this is overkill. Now, does it really matter to me that, it, I mean, he wants to pay for it, so it's not that big a deal. It, do, it doesn't matter to me. That's not the point. What I want to know is just what do you guys think? Would you do this or not? So, we came in, we formed it up with 2x12s, and you can see right where we're starting there, it's even going under the 2x12 just a little bit, so it's actually thicker maybe a little thicker than 12 inches right there and then we got two inches of styrofoam under it and that's just to help for frost protection we're in a, we're in a part of the region actually Maine where we get 48 inches of frost so that's to help the frost from going down under this thing and moving it and then we drilled and pinned it into the existing garage and we put a matter rebar in there number four rebar 12 inches on center and then we got an ISO strip, you know, some foam ISO strip up against the uh, foundation right there too. So 12 inches thick. I mean, if, if we're walking on it, most of uh, most the entry slabs we do like this are between four and six inches thick. So at four inches, this thing figures just under a yard. So let's just say a yard of concrete. So he's got an extra two yards of concrete in here, and. Just for simplicity, let's say a yard of concrete is about 150 bucks, so an extra $300 to pour this thing 12 inches thick. Um, I mean, that really doesn't sound all that bad in this whole scheme of things when you're building a new house, you know, what's an extra 300 bucks? So when you look at it that way, probably not really that big a deal as far as overkill goes. Um, as far as strength and what's needed, yeah, that might be overkill that way. So. You guys, you know, let me know what your opinions are down in the comments. If you were doing something similar to this, would you go with 12 inches? Would you go with 6 inches? Would you go with 4 inches? I mean, on a good gravel sub base, you can still go 2 inches of styrofoam, go 4 inches thick with a matter rebar in it, and, I mean, that thing's probably never going to move, never going to break, never going to crack, as long as you put the right joints in it. So... I guess it's just it's just a matter of what you want to do you know what 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 you feel what's gonna make you feel good and in this case where this guy's a structural engineer I mean we were doing multiple pads on his site we're doing multiple pads today that's why there's so, so many of us there and all of them were this thick so I guess he, that's just what he wanted and that's what we're giving him and that's what he's paying us for so it's not really the issue of that it's just the issue of is it really necessary or not now I'm gonna let this play out as so you can see just how we pour we're actually pouring 4,000 pound concrete too and we got fiber mesh in it also and then we're pouring it pretty dry you know we, we told the driver about a four four and a half inch for a slump slump is measured by how dry or how wet the concrete is and there's a there's a way to test for that so we just tell them how how thick we want it how dry we want it how wet we want it what slump we want it at and the driver tries to mix it up and get it as close to that as he can i'd say he got pretty close on this one this stuff's going in pretty dry it's also got three quarter inch stone in it so we uh we're making sure we vibrate those edges really good now, it, at the end of the day, when everything's all done and, and uh, finished grading on the outside, this thing will be right level with uh, whatever whatever excavation he's going to have, whatever grading, whether it's lawn or partial driveway that's going to be matching up to this. Um, this is actually part of his house right here. His garage is up above, so it's not really the entry to a, a garage, a side entry to a garage, it's the side entry to a house. So I'm, a, I'm thinking it's going to be mostly just lawn here. One good thing about it only being four feet wide is you don't really need to be inside it to screed it. You can screed it right from the outside. And 
stepping inside you can see that goes right to the top of his boot so that thing's really thick and it's just a little more difficult to screed when you're uh, trying to walk through concrete 12 inches thick at a four inch slump now we're going to show i'm going to show you here coming up too just how we finish this so we're going to we're going to mag float it out a couple times we're going to put an edger on it we're going to broom finish it so you'll that'll be coming right up here i just wanted you to see how we finish out pouring this thing and it ended up taking you know i figured i figured about three yards for this and then the pads up top were multiple yards too so we got about a 10 yard truck here that we're doing that wall you see going into the house with that door that that's just a temporary wall just so he could heat that space in there after we get done the pad he's going to pull that wall out and he'll build his well the, the studs will stay but the the door is coming out and I, I even think that sheathing's coming off and he's putting a different sheathing on and then he'll get his brand new door in there I think there's like a six footer going in here but um, that's that's what we're talking about here is this overkill or not and I mean 300 bucks is 300 bucks if you if you add up that on multiple different things throughout the building process I mean that adds up to quite a bit of money I guess it just comes down to what what you have for money right what your budget is what you have to spend I, I will tell you one thing this thing definitely isn't gonna go anywhere <laughs> it's gonna be there for a long long time um, the key will be to just maintaining it, not getting any, not getting any de-icing stuff on it. We'll end up putting a sealer on this too. We we came back afterwards and we sprayed a concrete sealer on it to help protect it. So we the trouble with Maine is they use all kinds of this liquid salt on the roads in the winter, and that stuff's just so strong it gets everywhere. Whether you you're driving in a garage, you're driving you know especially if you got a concrete driveway there's not too many concrete driveways in Maine believe it or not but there is a lot of there is a lot of concrete pads like this <laughs> exterior and then all the gas stations have like concrete pads in them but there's not too many residential concrete driveways I guess compared to asphalt resi uh, concrete driveways are just a you know probably triple or quadruple in price so most people opt to go with just asphalt around here Yeah, you can see we're getting that bow flow. That's a 48 inch bow flow. We like the ones with the rounded edges like that. I got links for all these tools guys down in the description if you want to check out you know some of the tools we use, the screeds, the mag floats, bow floats, the finishing tools, all that kind of stuff's down there. So now what Darren's doing is he's just cutting in the edge. It's still pretty soft. We we always cut in the edge when it's pretty soft just so we don't have to fight it later I mean we don't we typically don't do it like right after we bowl flow we'll give it a little time to set up so it'll hold its shape a little better but we still we like to cut them in pretty soft especially when we got multiple pads and yeah, Darren's gonna use a little bit of that cream just to fill in any any rock holes he creates when we when you push that edger down in the edge you're pushing those stones the three-quarter inch rock out away from the edge and sometimes that'll leave a hole a little bit of a gap and we just like to scrape up a little bit of that paste on the surface and then we'll fill the gap in with that. You can see one right there. Sometimes you just keep going over it and over it and it fills in, but you don't want to create a divot. You want to keep that edger nice and flat. You don't want to put too much pressure on the side that's rubbing up against the board and, and tip it. We like those small little brass edgers too. I mean, I know a lot of you guys like the steel ones. They leave a really smooth finished edge. We just prefer these. I mean, it's basically just preference. Whatever you guys like, they all leave a rounded edge. So it's just a matter of what you like to work with. Yeah, you can see how Darren just scrapes up a little bit of that paste and puts it on there. And then we're gonna mag float that scrape mark right out. So it's not that big a deal as long as you get it you know right after which is so here here these guys are Darren and Luke let the concrete firm up quite a bit let all the bleed water dissipate and then we'll get a the initial mag float on to bring up the pace get it nice and smooth and sometimes you know depending on the timing and whether it's in the sun or not we can we can broom right after this and just give a like a medium broom finish we don't want it too too fine 
but we don't want it coarse either. We don't want to be rolling any rocks. We don't want to broom it early. Those kind of finishes, broom finishes, are just ugly. So all we like to broom is the fine paste on the surface. So these guys will get it mag floated out first. Good thing about being only four feet is we can reach right across it just by using another mag. We can just put some pressure on it like Darren's doing. Darren, Darren's really fussy when he when he finishes. I mean, he likes making sure everything's perfect. He's filling in up against the up against the foundation there, where some of that might be some of that might be exposed and won't be covered up. So he wants to make sure that that's going to look really nice where that new door is going to be going in there. Man, look how thick that thing is. <laughs> I mean, labor-wise, as far as the forming, the pouring, the finishing, it really isn't any more work to do something this thick versus if it's four inches thick. As far as I'm concerned, it's not really. It may have a few more braces on it, but that's about it. So it's not really labor-wise. It's not that big a deal. It's just the concrete-wise. So here's how here's how we would finish the same thing. This one's actually up top, but it's the same same type of pad uh, a lot of times we'll just mag float it out again we don't steal trowel up here on exterior stuff so we'll mag float it out again really really tight yep. and while the paste is still kind of moist we'll drag that broom right over it so Darren dragged the broom over the first section and then he yep. he's just cleaning the little bit of paste off the broom in a, in a water bucket and then we'll drag it across again right there you can see that's that broom gives us like a medium finish. You can get a finer, like like lighter horsehair type broom, and it'll, it'll leave you a little bit finer broom finish if you want. But up here, where we have a lot of a lot of winter storms and freeze and hail and, and you know freezing rain, we don't like to leave them too too fine. We just give them a medium finish. But that's how we finish, guys. So let me know down in the comments, is it overkill or not? Just give me an answer. I'd appreciate that, and uh, we'll talk about it down in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.